Hi, my name is Sally Breckenridge, and I'm the author of I Weave It uh, for the iOS systems and also an Android version. I have never done a videos of this because there wasn't any way to really show how you did used your fingers, and I didn't. I'm not very experienced at videos, so I hadn't figured out how to do it. But I have a new iPad Pro and it has a pencil and I found that with the pencil I can demonstrate, with the pencil I can, you know, demonstrate how to do things without getting my hand right over the screen and in the way. And there are a few videos out on the YouTube on the iPad and or on the iWeave It and uh, which really surprised me and uh, I want to thank all those people who did those because they're really nice. It's nice to have a presence out there on YouTube. And I try, I'm try. i going to try and do more videos. I want to do one. Uh, this one will be on the basic uses of uh, the iPad. The uh, following videos will be on uh, the file management system and then one on uh, all the add-ons that you can get. And then I'm thinking of, you know, moving on to, you know, teaching a little more of how to use it for rigid heddle weaving or other types of weaving that people might be interested in or have asked me about it. So hopefully this will all help you learn more and understand better about eye weaving. When I believe it starts, you will see the drawdown screen in the center. This is the drawdown. This is the threading. This is the tie up. This is the treadling. I'm going to, in this video, explain all the different icons that you see around this screen, starting with the eye icon that's up in the left corner. This icon shows the weave it help. You will find these little eye icons all over that show you that. This one shows you what each of the icons are on this main screen, and it also has a link to the Weave It support page, which you can get a user guide for using iWeave It. To dismiss the help, you just tap on the screen, and that makes the little screens, the little pop-ups go away. So now I want to look at this one down here in the far right corner. That's the iWeaveIt icon. It shows you the version number and then my name and a, a, a link to rate it. And again, the support page and you can get the user guide and ask questions there. You'll see other questions. This link, this little star icon shows you the things that have been changed in iWeaveIt for each version and any support things that you might need to know. On this side over here you see the directory or the folders where iWeaveIt this file is located and it's on the local, it's on the iPad and it's in the iWeaveIt directory. Uh, the name of it of course is Startup. Down here, it tells you about the number of shafts and warps and wefts. I'm going to make a change real quick here because I want you to see. I just added something. We'll come back to that. But I want you to see this little star right here. That star tells you that you have changed the pattern and that you need to save it. This little icon says I can undo my last session. So the last session was editing and putting in that black thread. So I can just click on that and undo it. It still thinks it's modified, but it doesn't have that thread anymore. So now we'll look at this icon. You'll notice in the screen that although the pattern has only one diamond in it, the screen is showing many diamonds, and that is because it repeats the pattern. If you click on this button, which is the one repeat, 
then you can change it to just show your pattern and that's all or you can change it to show all of it and you can use just like on a phone you can pinch to zoom in and out and see it I don't know how to zoom with a pencil that's, I haven't learned that yet if the pattern were bigger you can scroll it too scrolling is just like scrolling on a phone so now to the editing when you tap on the threading you will see a box pop up and it's made so those squares are large enough that you can use your finger to edit because if it was small like say over here you know your finger might hit more than one square so that's one of the things and you'll notice that as I edited it, it added the new squares in to the draft, the new threads. Over here is your color palette and you can pick the colors. The little stars show you which colors are being used. So we're using the, the red, the blue, and the black. If you want to pick a different color to use, like the orange, you can just tap on the square and change the color. That's one way of changing colors. You can do that. Okay, so that's the mark mode. That just does a mark. In the next little square with the dotted lines, that is the select mode. In the select mode, you make a selection and then you can use these tools to operate on that selection. Also notice that you have the little I right here that has the help and dismiss that. To make a selection with your finger, let me put the pen down, with your finger, place it on the square and just hold it there until you see the red square. Then you can drag to make your selection. So it's a timing thing that it determines, it does that so that it can distinguish between scrolling and selecting. So you've selected. Now you have all these operations en enabled. For example, I can cut, I can copy, I copy it, then I can make a selection, say, with the mouth, with the thing, and there you have to press hard is how you make a selection using the pen. Apparently it doesn't react to the timer. So you have to press hard with the pen. And then you can paste, and it'll paste it into where you selected. You can do a flip, so you flip the colors, the, the warps around, you can do a vertical flip, you can wrap it, or you can undo that. Um, so those are the operations. This one here is select. If I put, let's say I put select this guy right here, I do an insert. Now I can see that there's a square here. I go into mark mode. Let's say I pick that color and I can put in a thread there. We'll put in an eight. So you can you have insert also. In the select mode, you'll notice you have an A that says select all. So that all, everything is selected. And I can go over here and pick a color, any color, uh, to see it change. Let's pick the green. It's kind of hard to do, well, green doesn't show up good on the movie, so maybe we'll do red. Red shows up better. We have this funny, oh, this, this right here would be the repeat of this eight, which looks a little weird. So let's go over and we'll select it. I'll use my finger here. Okay, I've selected it. And now I can just get rid of that one and do a cut. And now the screen looks a little better. I don't know, I still see a glitch. Where is it? Oh, we need one more over there at the end. So we'll go over to the mark and we'll pick our red, which is the red. And I'll just tap here and now that looks all smooth in there. So that's how you edit the threading. When you edit the treadling, it's exactly like the threading. You're using the color bar here to pick your colors. Pick that color. You're using 
the toolbar and mark mode and they all work the same. So if I'm in mark mode and I pick a thread, I get those colors. If I'm in select mode, tap, drag and slide, I will just do those and change the color. We'll change those to green. Okay, so I like colorful patterns. And that's how you would do that. And it works the same as the threading. Tie-ups uh, is, this is the tie-up. And you notice that the shafts are numbered one to eight from the bottom of the, of the threading to the top. Tie-ups are numbered one to eight from the left to the right. And when you read a threading, you read it right to left. So that might be a little confusing to new people, but that is the way tie the threading is always read from right to left. So this is the beginning, that's the end. In, in European and uh, other foreign markets, they do it the other way. They do it, it's just a difference in cultures and way people learn. So now we'll look at the tie-up. In the tie-up, you have the same type of tools across here. There's your little eye for your help. Just tap it and get rid of it. Um, they have a, uh, this has a, um, a twill tie-up currently set. We can currently we can just clear that. That's the center. That's this middle one. Shows that it's clear, and we can start a new one. Let's just do these three things. And this one here, this second one from the left is a twilling, twillet, I call it twillet. And you put it there and it twills, it generates the twill and creates the draft, draw down draft for that particular twill. You can flip it. And in this case, it's pretty symmetrical. You can wrap it, and you'll see you get something kind of different when you wrap here. And you can, you know, spend a lot of time creating your fun patterns this way and deciding which ones you would like to weave. Next, I want to show you the pattern setup. In this pop-up, you can set the number of shafts and the number of treadles that you want to use in your pattern. In this case, I'm just going to keep it at eight since we've already made a pattern, but you usually do this if, after you do the new. What I want to show you here is you can use treadles and that's how we designed it. But if you're working on a table loom, it's useful to use the lift plan which will show you the shafts to lift. You can also set the rising shed, the sinking shed. The rising shed is used for jack looms. The sinking shed is typically used for counter march looms. We'll pick accept. And you'll notice here, now you have the uh, tie, tie up and you can't edit it. It gives you a warning. It says there's no treadle, so you can't edit it. But what it does is it shows you the shafts to lift, one, two, five, and the next picked is two, three, and six. So if you're using a treadle loom, that's the best way to do it. I'm gonna go back to, to my treadles. I just wanted to show you that. Let's go here. The final thing that I wanna show you is color setup. And this is that color palette editor that you can edit the colors for your color bar. And you can create any colors that you would like. So I want to create a kind of a teal color. And I can change the light and dark until I get what I want. And then I pick set color and it changes it to that color and I can use it. The colors that have the little stars are colors that are being currently used in the pattern. So if I select this one, this is this green. I can say, oh, I really wanted a darker green. And so we're gonna change that to that color. 
Now when I go back to the screen, you will see that it changed the color to this color. So that is all for this demo. I want to show you on the next demo uh, how to do the open files and the file management for iWeaveIt. Um, I hopefully this video was helpful to you.